Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm, my name is Dave Hagrups. I'm the CEO of TPA Global. I'm the host of, uh, of this event today where we, where we talk about how to organize your end-to-end -end text technology solution, but even more important, how to become a best-in-class text technology team. Um, I'm very honored today to have with me Nirash, uh, and Nirash is uh, founder and CEO of Signet Infotech, together with Akash. He's head of product development, uh, especially in the area of tax and technology. So I think we have a, a very excellent team to uh, run the show today. Um, welcome. Uh, we uh, will move to the next slide where I will illustrate a little bit what we mean with end-to-end -end, uh, technology solutions. So uh, Signet, uh, together with TPA, will uh, tell you about uh, an end-to-end -end compliance data from source tier to reporting tier uh, 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 setup where uh, connectors help you to feed data into a piece of, of that technology, which is then shared through a digital mailbox with the tax authorities, um, where as a second layer agreements through, uh, for example, intercompany agreements for transfer pricing purposes are uh, being uh, signed by signature which is another uh, repository and, and digital signing uh, tool uh, signet brings to the table um, as a third layer the, the whole area of tax risk management is is fairly underdeveloped in the area of tax technology uh, Signet has developed an automation WIS, which basically can, through bots, um, it's almost like Pac-Man, can, they can auto-generate bots functionality where each bot has a specific task and, and is measuring data against a, a, um, a normative framework. Uh, and that means you can do an analysis on one million documents in less than one or two days as long as the bots uh, continue working while you're uh, sound asleep. Um, so, so this is uh, the, the next wave of what we call forensic data or forensic accounting or uh, data analytics, uh, which is also reaching the area of tax. And obviously, at the end of the day, uh, you, you, you're more and more obliged to do real-time reporting, not only to your in-house uh, stakeholders, but also to tax authorities, where Power BI is one example where where it gives you the status insight, what is the percentage of completion, uh, but a, a tool um, Signet developed with a company called eBright uh, is a compliance factor, and that gives you actionable insight, which uh, is obviously helpful, uh, so everyone knows what uh, they need to do next. So this is the overall. Uh, game of the end-to-end -end technology solutions. Before we move on, the, the, the whole concept we, we uh, uh, seriously believe in at, uh, at TPA and SIFNET as well is you need to have your people inspired. You need to define uh, in, in a, in a well-mannered way, in a, a rigid way almost, your processes. Uh, and you need to get the technology um, organized, which uh, facilitates and enhances uh, the, the people role and the, and the process um, functions uh, which you're obliged to, to, uh, to put in place. Um, so people, process and technology is a very important theme, and, uh, although today we will be talking a lot of, on, on processes and technology. Next slide, please. Um, there's uh, various trends on the integration of tax technology solutions. So maybe uh, two years ago, we did a webinar on one tax technology software. I think what the market uh, has been struggling with uh, all along is uh, how do you then subsequently integrate all these uh, different software tools? Uh, so one, one of uh, my clients is looking at uh, 150 to 200 applications the tax department uses and really wants to create efficiencies and effectiveness and also speed of handling the data
from its uh, source here to uh, to ultimately hit the digital mailbox of the tax authority. So you need to start thinking of an um, an integrate, integration or reduction of the number of applications uh, of of tools. Uh, what are the benefits we will address? Um, why is this people process technology so important? Uh, so what is the um, a recently introduced belt system for tax technology it's so important to get the, the right people on the on the job uh, what is the minimum target as a multinational you need to set yourself uh, and and then uh, um, signet will showcase a few uh, of their tools uh, the VAT technology the legal technology uh, the, the bots functionality with tax risk management and, and some of the dynamic dashboarding. Uh, last but not least is always the, the big challenge by in-house tax people. How do we sell it to, uh, to our own internal people who have the money to finance all of these uh, projects? So we're going to uh, at least scratch the surface on the ROI uh, storyboard, which is increasingly important in the, in the, as part of the game. And uh, uh, we close off with uh, next steps uh, for multinationals. Um, if you have any questions, there's a, a, a chat box. So please share that with uh, uh, Tiana and, and the rest of the team. So Tiana can bring them forward to, to, to the speakers. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the trends on, uh, on, on integration of tax technology? solutions well if if data is the future of tax uh, it doesn't always make the distinction anymore between uh, the data relevant for VAT or the, the data relevant for corporate income tax or data relevant for VAT or customs and a, a lot of the data has multiple uses uh, so if I if I look at uh, transactional data I can use it for DAC6 reporting, which is a, a mandatory reporting in, in Europe. I can use it for uh, my intercompany transactional matrix for transferizing. I can use it for my um, VAT returns and even to some extent for my customs uh, filings. Um, so, so data uh, is, is a different way of looking at your tax workflows. And is less uh, is making less the distinction or does less silo the, the different tax departments and the different tax flows as we traditionally know it. Uh, so that's a, a, a reset of the mind on how to look at data. Um, as we know, and that's sort of what the community, uh, the pressure from community drives us. If we uh, we move to a public CBCR for some companies uh, already in 2023 in Europe, if we have to do all sorts of reportings on SAFT and then uh, if uh, e-invoicing is sort of the, the, the extreme version of transparency, you have especially in the in a system where the, the clearing uh, is, is being honored by the tax authorities, that means they need to clear and give you a digital watermark on your invoice before you can move to the market. That means uh, transparency puts also pressure on the speed at which data needs to be shared with, uh, with tax authorities. The same will apply uh, not too far away from now for direct tax uh, reporting. Um, we're, we're looking a little bit later on the, on the integration of your tax accounting reporting uh, together with country by country reporting or even pillar two reporting, which is on, on the, at the horizon a lot of uh, companies are looking at today. Um, we, we already said it, always use people process technology approach. We've seen 90% plus of the project fail if technology is driving it uh, simply because the people are not on board, the processes are not that accurately defined. So it's uh, it's uh, basically automating uh, chaos with without in, uh, enough inspiration of the people who have to make the difference between success and failure of such a project. Um, the consequence of all of this uh, as, as a trend that the tax compliance cycle uh, with 
fairly high ambition and target levels uh, in terms of uh, how, ma how many minutes, how many hours do you spend on a tax uh, or on a VAT return, for example. Uh, they drive the automation process uh, where also this co-compliance model where tax authorities are expecting these data sets uh, on, on a close to real time base will drive uh, uh, you into a different arena almost. Uh, on tax risks, um, obviously the, a lot of the brain power which is used today to assess tax risks uh, is, is still a human intervention needed. So I'm, I'm not claiming that that will be replaced soon by, uh, by technology, but the, the start is there as we will see today. Okay, if we move to the next slide. Uh, so what are the benefits of an end-to-end -end solution approach? And an end-to-end -end solution approach means you, you, you have the, the dirty data, you, you collect it, you um, rework it, you uh, rationalize it, you uh, uh, manipulate the data to make it ready uh, as clean data for tax filings. Uh, and that is happening uh, as, as the second point says, through one, a single source of data, which interacts with a single source of information, uh, which interacts with your daily work spot. Uh, so you, if you're on Office or Google, uh, your dashboarding will give you, through the single source of information, various updates on, uh, on what, what is happening, what is the state of readiness of this data flow from source here to, to tax authorities. Smarter tax architecture and management we talked about. If you, if you have tax accounting reporting uh, being, uh, the, the reports, the reporting tax being extended uh, with a few variables, it suddenly means you can also feed uh, the, the data from that reporting uh, into your CBCR and into your pillar two uh, calculation. So then it means you're only picking up the data once. Um, using a holistic view on data, as we said, versus uh, data available by mapping data models. Uh, this is also uh, sort of one of the benefits you you will uh, you will see because you're looking at the data and not per se the tax workflow as a starter. Uh, the whole system becomes much more end-to-end, -end, much more efficient and effective uh, from that perspective. In other words, if you do automation, and my definition of automation is incremental improvement of your system, uh, you might save 10, 20% of time and sometimes of cost. If you do a, a digital transformation, especially at the data end, uh, we, we know a lot of tax departments spend at least 50% of their time on collecting data and reworking data and making it suited for uh, tax purposes, then your savings could be a, a minimum of 50%. So the difference is quite uh, significant. Uh, having tax professional being involved in the whole end-to-end -end data chain will also be important. So have tax people sitting within the ERP finance team cleaning the data at source rather than cleaning it when it comes out in a polluted way is more and more becoming an, uh, an into fashion as well. I know that's that's still in the early phases, but certainly it's something to consider. Um, you need a clear target. If you if you say I want an end-to-end -end solution, um, Rome wasn't built in one day, so we, we, we are all recognizing how hard it is to get this digital transformation established uh, with the people who like as people are uh, in, 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 in old traditions, in the old ways of doing things. Uh, so you need to get uh, people uh, inspired on this, this whole movement. And, and you do that typically also by having cl a clear target. I call it the Tax Vision 2025, which is not too far away from now to still be realistic and, and uh, putting you um, into the spotlights uh, to, to achieve that. Okay, if we move to the next slide. 
Uh, this is a little bit what I was talking about. Uh, Jeff Pack, he's an experienced taxologist. Um, he, uh, he's running his own um, uh, shop in, in the UK. And he, uh, he made this picture and he calls this the, 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 the tax scale transformation map. So he says, okay, if people are the most important one uh, in, in the whole process and the, the, making the difference between failure and success of such a tax technology transformation plan, what uh, are the job roles for these people? Well, here you see the, the, the job roles to the left. Uh, there's a tax business advisor. Uh, so someone who's together as a co-pilot to your business uh, can directly indicate uh, on, on new business models, on new transactions, what the tax consequences are. Uh, there is an ERP tax modeler, data modeler, which uh, already does some, uh, some rework and some uh, better data definitions relevant for tax uh, within the operations and, and projects before it hits the ERP. Obviously, once it hits the ERP, the uh, flexibility goes down considerably. Uh, and, and as you see from this picture, typically a lot of uh, companies take uh, a clean cut copy from the ERP into a tax data refinery where tax data analysts with use of uh, Alteryx, Python, or UiPath uh, extract the relevant uh, portion of the data for compliance and ultimately also for tax strategy planning and risk management uh, purposes. So this gives you uh, kind of a different role uh, of uh, what, what, what is out there. Um, as you see, there is uh, traditional roles, but there's also new roles, especially the red ones are, are the, the new ones where a taxologist, again, to explain, uh, overlooks the, the whole series of uh, digital transformations uh, which happen in the space of data, uh, in the, the space of people, in the space of processes, and in the space of technology, and needs to bind it together and communicate it to the lead team, either CFO or head of tax. So this is the tax skill transformation map, uh, which a lot of companies are still working on. Uh, there's not a lot of people in the market, uh, so if we look at the next slide, uh, this is an, um, a, a recently launched initiative by a company called eBright, and uh, Jeff Beck uh, in the UK is, is part of that in initiative, where a belt system uh, like a Six Sigma belt system you, you know from supply chain management is being developed, where uh, knowledge is not per se the, the, the real driver, but it's also the, the, the flight, the number of flight hours you've been making. Um, you know the belt system for martial arts, maybe uh, this, is, this is the belt system for tax technology professionals. And uh, we're working also with a, a variety of universities to get this uh, 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 curriculum fully loaded uh, on, a, on a global basis and made available to uh, to corporates as well as uh, other people involved and interested in this uh, in this new specialism within uh, within tax catering for all the other job titles we just looked at in the previous uh, previous slide. So again, people is of the essence uh, to make this all a very successful digital transformation. Um, moving to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, where, where in the in the ideal storyboard you have a single source of data, which is the gray area on the right hand, and you have a single source of information. Where, as as we talked about it, for example, Power BI uh, gives in the blue box status insight to the lead tax of compliance, uh, the lead tax compliance person, I should say, the audit committee or even C suite while uh, an, a compliance tracker like Aeolus gives you actionable insight, which is for local finance and local tax compliance people to uh, run the next uh, report or file and complete the next fat return as a, as a consequence. 
uh, and that's uh, connected to either Office or Google environment in terms of work spot. So also the interface with, uh, with the work spot, uh, a concept like single sign-on uh, comes to, to mind here uh, is, is going to be very important. So it's almost like revamping the work spot of uh, tax professionals where uh, in, in some cases the sign-ons uh, to software applications becomes a, a drag for uh, for a lot of multinationals um okay so here is a clear distinction between the data flow and the information flow uh, for a reason um if, if we go to the next slide um this this is sort of the question what is your minimum target so if if today you spend most of the time on collecting data uh you prepare financials and you review the financials um that that's the majority of your tasks which and and even some rework of the data is is needed uh, hardly time for planning you just are in a survival mode because tax authorities throw so many forms at you which all need to be filled with data so that's that's sort of you're out of breath before you get to the real analytics and the real risk management uh, arena uh, and your future what you want to be uh, less involved in collecting data Prepare financials is less, although somewhat still relevant. A review process, a human intervention only happens upon a need to need to be involved base. However, your planning and monitoring becomes uh, an essential part. Uh, so you're almost like a dashboard uh, with uh, with uh, visualizations on uh, what is the status of completion on your data flow. Uh, moving from a dirty data point from where it's originated to a clean data point being shared in XML with the, the tax authorities. But what what is more interesting is here to see that the analytics and the risk management get more, um, uh, the, the in-house tax team gets more hours to, to really focus on where they should be adding their value. So it basically, we're pushing a lot of the finance-related roles around data into um, a, a standardization uh, a process and, and hopefully enhanced by uh, pieces of regional and global technologies, which frees up resources for the, the, the analytics and risk management part. Okay, with that, we are moving to the next slide. Just uh, maybe uh, stop here for one minute, whether there's any questions or Akash, Niraj, any, any observations from your end? All right, thank if, you. Uh, from my side, all good. And uh, kind of, uh, if there are any questions, I would definitely be happy to answer them. To see. Diana, did we get any chats, any questions from the audience so far? No questions at this time, no. Okay, very good. Um, handing over to Akash and the Arash on, the, on the, this uh, next slide where we look at the FAT technology illustration. So, Akash, do you want me to take that? Yeah, yeah sure. So, so when we kind of, uh, the biggest challenge, so we are working with some of the largest uh, corporates in the world and uh, with the large tax firms. And the biggest challenge is the dirty data. So kind of when you are kind of extracting the data out of your ERP, the biggest challenge is how do you kind of ensure that the data is correct in nature? And that's the biggest challenge. And second major challenge is with e-invoicing coming into play globally, the major challenge is how do you ensure that the e-invoice is correctly sent to your clients? or you receive the invoices rightly from your vendors and both are integrated in an automated manner into your system because the typical invoices or the typical QR code which are associated with this invoice on a printed copy are sometimes very difficult to read or very difficult to automate. So ensuring that a kind of a digital connectivity of the same is possible 
and ensuring that that is done it's important to do a kind of a hyper automation implementation for your entire tech stack process so taking the invoices as an input kind of ensuring that they are properly stored into a proper data warehouse wherein it becomes a single source of truth and in future whatever modifications are happening onto the kind of erp side they are also noted down into the same so any changes in terms of your tax return filing or corrections that you need to do is kind of done well then the tax data extraction or the modification also needs to be done in an automated way then you kind of ensure that the tax returns are preparation and you do the compliance filing now when it's kind of a real time reporting is responsible or, or is implemented or invoicing needs to be done then to ensure that this data comes back and you are kind of able to provide the same to your customers that is also equally important so that is a critical component that better you automate it better performs and then you are sure about the quality of the data can we kind of move to the next slide please so end to end approach when we kind of take in terms of tax compliance there would always be multiple heterogeneous data sources so now with the e-commerce coming into so much into play all the invoicing is not necessary that it will happen from your erp only you will have erp as a kind of a source system then you would have the e-commerce platforms you may have kind of a manual invoices and you have multiple types of invoices into the system and the quality of extraction that happens from those erp systems or from the other systems through a connector ecosystem or by deploying a bot is kind of brought through a data exchanger into the client infrastructure into a tech stack suit that is available so this entire process on the left hand side which has been shown needs to be automated to ensure that the quality of data that is coming for the tax return preparation is high quality and it is accurate in nature because the penalties that the uh, tax authorities are kind of putting across for the wrong reporting are becoming more and more high and from the entire tax infra suit you can ensure that the same is being pushed to the tax authorities in a digital manner and kind of uh, taken it back into your erp system and it is kind of connected to a level so that your ers is the system also records the confirmations of those returns being filed into the backward integration so this entire mechanism the way you can automate it is it's using different kind of connectors maybe using the rpa solutions around it or kind of using the sftp based file transfer or even a api based integration is possible so these are the multiple types of integration which can be deployed for executing this complete uh, ecosystem into a digital way can you move to the next slide please yeah i think uh, steve or akash want to take this slide please sure i i can take this one sir yeah. so after like on, on a strategic approach once you have done uh, the first bit of uh, doing the automation which is extracting the data ensuring it is cleansed and uh, converted into the right format and filing is done the next part that uh, any advisor or uh, your tech team would need to focus on is ensuring the dashboarding monitoring and planning of all these activities is done in the right way and to in order to ensure that all the critical deadlines across all the geographies where your uh, your corporation has got offices in is in line with the with the compliance deadlines of the authorities and you are not missing any deadlines as well as the tech teams which are spread across the globe are in sync when they are working across to creation and submission of those uh, files you need to ensure that you have a particular central platform where everyone starting from the teams who are working on the ground till the cfo level executives are up to date on to on to what is happening on each and every geography so that's where we highlight the dynamic dashboarding concept so here uh, everyone of us are having regular challenges of uh, information is not available at the right position we are having different ways of uh, 
capturing the information, whether it is in Google spreadsheets or in emails. And it becomes a, a, a cumbersome task to ensure that all the information is presented to the right person into the right uh, right time. And that's where we have uh, launched another platform where all this information can be collated into a single platform where the deadlines from the authorities are automatically pulled in wherever possible through APIs so that any update, any change uh, is updated to the, to the team of, of the deadlines which are there, as well as the teams who are working on it right from the IT department to the tech teams who are working in collaboration to create the end-to-end -end filing solution are up to date on to the statuses that needs to be done. And the third element which we also would like to highlight here is the external advisory teams. So for each and every filing, uh, there is there is always a need to have the reviews and controls from the external advisory teams. And it is very important to have them also play an important role in this overall workflow. And, and it is important that you keep them in line and have a streamlined RACI structure across all the teams. So it is very clear on who is responsible, who is accountable, and who needs to be consulted and informed for each and every of the filing that needs to be done. And all of this is kept uh, in line with the, with the very fundamental purpose that it should be visible across the teams, whether it is internal or external. Uh, the information can be more or less depending upon who the, who the reviewer is or who the uh, end, end user is but it needs to be automated. And thirdly, we would like to integrate workflows there because most of the teams would like to have the approval cycle into, into the overall process of ensuring that when a return is created, it needs to be approved and then submitted to the, to the authorities. So having a simplified workflow helps across keeping in line that the compliances are in check and I'm, those are not being missed. Yeah, we can move to the next slide. This is again very much in line with our end-to-end -end integration and having, uh, including the dynamic dashboard into the complete text ecosystem. We also call it uh, the complete ecosystem for an automation. So here we start with the source tier where we identify the sources of data and we ensure that okay, from wherever the data can be extracted through different mediums, so which which we discussed, and even getting the data from external sources as well. And that could be government portals, that could be authority portals, that could be custom uh, custom declaration websites or, or the import export websites and getting the data into the right format. And that's where the integration piece would come into picture of ensuring that, OK, there is there is a data exchanger in place or there are standard ETL tools which can which can help you extract the right information. And once the extraction piece is done, then the next bit or the next step for for organizations should be creation of text data warehouse uh, we we call we we call this concept of text data warehouse or text data lake and this has helped large organizations in ensuring uh, that they get a single source of data and not have data spread across multiple channels or multiple source systems so uh, that also helps in ensuring the audit readiness is right at place as well as to ensure different Next level, MIS reportings can also be ran onto those data warehousing. And, and this, would, this would work for large enterprises who have got uh, offices spread across or operations spread across multiple geographies. And, and they can centralize their text teams to ensure that, okay, uh, a centralized text team can have and manage their compliances through a single data warehouse. And, and how do we enable those text teams uh, that becomes part of our processing and reporting layer where, where once we have created this particular data warehouse, then tax determination or different calculation and validation of those data can be kept onto it. And the right analytics report are being shared across with the right teams to highlight if there are any gaps into the data, as well as if there are any issues which, which, which needs to be highlighted. And that's where even KPI calculation and predictive data modeling can also be done on top of the data. Once, once the analytics part is done along with the, with the internal text teams, the data and the, and, and the reports can be then further used to prepare the returns and even submit the data to the tax authorities wherever there is e-invoicing or real-time reporting of SAFT and, and submission of transactions. 
as well as uh, there can there can be a possibility of having different bots which can be deployed and different automated submissions which can be done wherever wherever the authorities have got the apis or the option of what to submit submit the return and submit the transactions yeah uh, can... a, a point here uh, maybe one back tiana um the the art of getting uh, data from source tier to the reporting uh, tier and the add-ons without damaging the data or corrupting or bias, biasing, uh, putting a bias on the data, it lies in the in the secret of connectors. Uh, so if you have APIs and connectors to get um, all this information, uh, because each um, data model uh, and the, that is four or five standard data models. Each software is based on a different data model. To make sure that the software pieces do actually talk to each other. With ERP, that is typically a given. With a lot of other systems, that's not. Uh, what I think makes Signet a very unique proposition is they have over 40 plus uh, connectors uh, and, and, and APIs which uh, allow the, the 40 software pieces which are in a source tier available to you, the 40 software packages which are in an integration mode available to you, and so, and so on and so on. So you're talking about a minimum of 200 regional and global software packages. Uh, but they all need to talk to each other and, and obviously the game is um, and make the right choices on what talks to what the best, uh, rather than having to customize all these connectors yourself. And so that's a part of this whole end-to-end -end game as well. Uh, uh, this was uh, Akash in uh, addition, I felt, uh, was, uh, was useful. Very, very rightly safe, safe. And even uh, I would say that with the connectors, I guess one important challenge which we all are discussing is the data and ensuring the clean data from dirty to clean data, ensuring the extraction of data is there. And uh, right as important as extraction of the data is, it, it is the important of converting the data or uh, massaging it into the right format which is required either for, let's say, invoicing, real-time reporting, return formation, uh, validation, etc. And, and probably I, I would like to also highlight that uh, you know I show a small a small demo video of of this conversion. So uh, if, if Tijana, you can make me the present trial, I'll, I'll show a quick glimpse of how a particular utility can help it. And and the beauty of that utility is it is quite easy to configure so that a texting user can can configure and will create the built-in rules which can then be used to convert. Uh, 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 complex data, let's uh, for an example, uh, the extraction file from Amazon. So the, the format of the Amazon's VAT report is quite complicated and to read it and to create return out of it, it it's a different challenge altogether. Such tools can definitely help you uh, streamline some of those processes. I think we can move to the next slide, Takash, correct? Yes. Uh, can we uh, can we show the demo first, Steve, uh, for, for the converter? Yes. Uh, Tijana, you can make me the presenter. Or... Uh, yeah, it should be OK now. Uh, yes, it's uh, visible now. Thank you. I hope uh, we can see a complex Excel sheet on my screen. Yes, we can. Yeah. So generally, this this is how the data extraction or a report extracted from an ERP would look like. And uh, we would we have a utility of which which would allow users to configure this particular platform. And what it does is it has got different options right from creating a new connector to having multiple file transportation. So no matter what your sources are, it could be a local system from where we need to pick the file, it could be a cloud, or it could even be an SFTP location from there where it can pick, pick a particular file. And once the, the file has been picked, 
it, it has got multiple different permutation and combination for doing different operations onto it. So it, it could go right from replacing a value to auto filling a value or even doing a merging and calculation for some of the columns and some of the formats which are required. So this particular platform is very, very simple to use and that's how a particular utility would allow users to practically uh, manipulate a data in a manner which, which makes it clean and which makes it ready for, for creation of returns or for submission of, of returns to the authorities. And uh, this is very similar to how a particular text user or, or texting user would write formulas in Excel uh, to practically run pivots and run VLOOKUPs to, to create, create the report which is required by the authorities. And here it gets automated in a very simplified interface. And it, once it is done, it, it, it programs and it remembers all those settings. So next time any of such operations are required, it is all into an automation mode. And, and the positive part here is once you set it up across, there can be a scheduler which is actually put, pulling across a file from your ERP and then this converter is actually converting the file and giving it across to whatever other tools that you're using for either MIS, for either your return automation, or it could be your CDCR, Pillar 2, all the other applications which rely on clean data can, can consume the data which gets exported from such, such platforms. I think I am good, Shidana. You can you can take the control back. Thanks, uh, Akash. Yeah, I think important uh, one of the the projects uh, a lot of corporates are working on. If you have a tax accounting reporting pack, uh, can you add to the reporting packs you you? Uh, you have sent to the central tax accounting team, can you add enough variables to also cater, for example, for the CBCR reporting, uh, as well as your pillar two um, uh, reporting, which is which is coming up. So again, uh, you're looking at uh, these connectors being essential uh, in, uh, in, in creating a, uh, an integrated data flow uh, since um, um, uh, your tax reporting typically is in US GAAP IFRS. Your CBCR is also following the same uh, accounting standards as a starting point, and the pillar two does the same. There's a lot of commonality in the data sets uh, and, and rationale to, uh, to, to do this, to take this smart data approach. Back to you, uh, Akash. Perfect. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the inputs there, Steve. I think. Uh... Uh, now, once uh, we, we have, I think we have talked enough about uh, the tax automation and one of the important elements of the overall uh, automation piece for your tax processes is including the legal documents. So this, this could be an invoice, this could be a, a return file which needs to be digitally signed by, by your company. So for all of those such operations, it is very important that you have an automated piece of digital signature platform which can help you do that and it, it should not only be a digital signature platform where uh, a user needs to deploy the file and it, it can digitally sign and get it out it, it will not be scalable uh, giving an example of invoices where uh, let's say nbfc's uh, need, needs all their invoices to be digitally signed before sending it across to the customers and uh, those invoices can be in thousands and hundreds of thousands as well, depending upon the customer base. And having a manual process to to manage all of that can be quite complicated. Uh, that's where uh, you, you should look at options of uh, automating the overall signature process where uh, the documents or the invoices which are getting generated uh, can be picked up by this platform from the folder or even from an, in, from an email and it can automatically stamp the digital signatures onto those uh, those documents and put it back into a designated folder or even email the documents uh, as, as per the rules that we could write, write it across. And this whole process works in an automated and a background process. So no user intervention and there is no uh, user error prone process in, in the whole flow. 
I think yeah, one well, point uh, to, to add here, Akash, uh, this legal documents or email with a signature as an example is typically um, a part of the unstructured data. Um, a, a lot of companies have a hard time capturing it uh, to, be, to make it part of the structured data you want to use for your tax compliance process. So this is another angle to, to get it from unstructured data to structured data. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. It, it's one of the sources of unstructured data. Yeah, Tijana, we can move to the next slide. I guess this is this is the extension of uh, the automation piece on the on the legal documentation. So uh, this is more about the platform that we have got, and it has got different integration already with uh, with the authorities uh, based uh, integration like for gulf we have got ue pass and it, it can do bulk signing uh, and it, it can even do versioning of documents and have got a client server as well as a cloud-based application it, it it has got options of uh, being being biometric so you can use your uh, your thumb impressions and others to even sign a document as well and most importantly this whole application is blockchain based so all the documents and the uh, and the related digital signatures are kept on a blockchain platform which makes it more safe and and more robust from an over end to end uh, compliance perspective uh, yeah Dijana, we can move to the next one Now, talking about the unstructured data, I think we just touched it upon uh, when we talked about uh, invoices uh, being an email or into, into a specific folder. And uh, one of the key challenges which organizations face is extraction of uh, data from this unstructured, uh, extraction of information from this unstructured data. Because structured data is a bit easier to manage and manipulate, but unstructured, it becomes quite cumbersome. And that's where uh, the RP applications come into play, where they can read the data from, from different sources, whether it be an invoice, uh, a scanned copy, or, or, a, or a digital file, or it could be a website from where the information needs to be extracted. It can autofage all those details. It can even help in the uh, automatic translation of all of this. And uh, not just that, but also create some reports which are required from out of that, that extracted information and that that also brings in the MIS piece into picture as well for, for the end-to-end -end implementation and integration. Uh, can we move to the next one? Uh, I've got a good uh, screenshot which it shows how this can help. Uh, yeah, So this is how uh, an RPA piece uh, in action can help you extract the information. So what we see here is, is a text invoice. And here the RPA piece has actually extracted uh, the invoice date and other relevant information from this particular invoice. And it can then further feed this, uh, this expense detail into ERP and other systems as well. And quite rightly, this, this becomes a great use case for, for reclaim of, uh, of VAD. So most of, uh, most of the uh, uh, companies or organizations who are based in Europe would be having a lot of VAT reclaims uh, depending upon, upon their business travel and ensuring that all of their expenses are tracked and all of their all of the information from the expense invoice is validated and then submitted to the authorities to reclaim that VAT. That's such applications can add great value and uh, great efficiency onto, onto such platforms. Yeah, it's a, it's a wide uh, usage of um, of uh, of these uh, automation ways. Uh, simply said, if uh, if a um, an, uh, uh, company uh, uh, employing people wants to look at the expense reports, if a company has uh, transfer pricing with true ups and outliers, I think it's uh, it's a very wide use of these bots, auto generated bots. Each bot gets it its own target and its own norm a norm imposed and it brings it brings back the the, the outliers uh, almost uh, in split seconds i think that's what we all, all are looking for so this is a, a dual application the bots functionality first generation is just pushing without any without any analytics 
pushing uh, a, a number a data point forward in the organization maybe to the tax data lake um uh, the the second and third generation we're talking about here is is sent with a mission to also analyze whether the the, the data point in that cell they they are yes or no moving is in line with uh, with the required standards according to law or or regulations uh, so i think we're talking second and third generation bots functionality here which can also deal with the dynamics of the underlying ERP system if that gets an upgrade or an update um, uh, typically the the mapping structure you did originally it does not work anymore well this this second third generation will will be able to cater for that absolutely <clears throat> Uh, we've got a few minutes left. Uh... Yeah, this is uh, a little bit uh, lessons learned. Huh? So we, we said, okay, this is all great, but it sounds like a heavy duty uh, lift uh, if you have this future point uh, at the horizon called uh, uh, Tax Vision 2025, and you need to, to choose from what digital transformation project you're going to uh, select from um, the, the, then then this is sort of where and this is only part of the questionnaire we uh, we are developing and, and are implementing with a few of our clients where the answers to these uh, questions will give you the, the qualitative as well as quantitative data to to enable you to uh, uh, to set up your um, business plan to be presented to the lead team the lead tax team the the, the CFO to get uh, a tax technology transformation plan uh, approved also from a budget and number of people perspective. And so this is uh, a little bit what the lessons learned on. You need to have certain targets on people, on processes, on technology and on data. And based on uh, on completing this uh, this questionnaire, you will get to an, an ROI calculation, which, uh, which uh, should impress uh, the, the the, the team who who is the budget owner of uh, of these type of tax technology um, projects. Um, next slide. So what is uh, what is the next steps? I, I think the introduction of an end-to-end -end system for tax end-to-end um, -end doesn't end at the legal border of a multinational end-to-end uh, -end is really the whole uh, the whole flow through of your digital data XML format uh, to the tax authorities and the signal back that the tax authorities has accepted uh, in terms of accuracy and completeness your data set. Uh, so end-to-end -end really goes into a co-compliance mode. Um, that's the that's the way the future will work. Uh, OECD is uh, is planning right after BAPS to uh, organize uh, the, their own tax authorities digital transformation, and that at that point in time they will be able to uh, to deal a lot better with the data, the excessive data input they get today, where only a fraction of that data is being touched. Um, to, uh, to get those savings uh, uh, in excess of 50%, you need to rethink your data. So the smart tax data architecture and, uh, and tax data management we talked about, it, it remains uh, essential uh, in getting the rest of the organization on board. If you do incremental steps, uh, neither the tax authorities nor your bosses will be happy. That's, that's in short what, uh, what it boils down to. People, process, and technology uh, is a prerequisite. If you don't inspire the people, if you don't have the process uh, well defined, and a lot of process definitions are given by the tax authorities, by the way, so it's not necessarily you need to think uh, think that up yourself. It's it's already readily available. Uh, real time uh, tax compliance requirements. So if uh, Saudi Arabia uh, Dahu, uh, the, the, the Egypt is is driving e-invoices uh, these days and, and, and is uh, intending to do so. Then um, the, the question is, uh, and that this is what I call oil or water, which country is next? So real-time tax compliance requirements, 
uh, therefore also need to to make real-time dynamic dashboarding available to uh, to your in-house team multidisciplinary teams um, which need to be more and more certified green belt black belt so this is the belt system uh, we, uh, we we talked about in summary have your tax vision 2025 ready uh, define your major challenges and take uh, stock of the available solutions. Uh, as, as I said, Source here has 40 ERP systems to, to choose from and each of the layers above as well and, and do they all talk to each other. So it's not necessarily an easy game. Um, and, and start running your tax technology transformation plan to achieve that target is, is what a lot of uh, multinationals are, are starting to do um, these days. Not not only through the internal triggers, but certainly through the triggers imposed on them by uh, by tax authorities. Agash, Nigash, uh, any any final statements? I think yes. I think uh, all good. But the most important thing is that the mindset has to change in terms of automating it because now the manual processes are not going to suffice the requirement from the tax authorities anymore. So sooner the transition is kind of initiated, it would be better and we would be more than happy to kind of provide any deep dive of other information that is required into any aspects. So more than happy to do that. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Akash Niraj. Uh, thanks to all of you. Is there any, Tiana, is there any final questions from the audience before we dash off? There are no questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, all of you for, uh, for being present and uh, there will be another end-to-end -end technology session in the, in the next uh, month. So look out for the registrations. And again, thank you and uh, have a nice day. Thank you all, thanks a lot. Thank you everyone, have a good day.